I ain't worried about the census. Want, fuck him. Yeah. You don't want to get banned because, you know, when he's doing uh uh-uh. uh. Right. Yeah, that's all right. Well, the other guys on my other show did that all the time. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is this is legal here. Maybe not in Finland, but you could like literally just. You could go to the gas station now and buy a pack of joints. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. It's it's here. It's legal here a little bit too. So is not, it? not okay. as much as it. Yeah, not as much as it is by him, but it's it's getting there. But okay. uh, all right, let's let's start it up so I can get we, my coffee. I don't want to drink all my coffee before we even talk. <laughs> we we actually are live now, and we are live with the Team Toki podcast, and we are here with uh, Trevor William Church from the band Haunt. What's up, Howdy. Trevor? What's going on, guys? Glad to be here. Yeah, glad for you to uh, join us. And this is going to yeah. be a lot of fun. And Timo wanted to do this show. Uh, Timo, me and you haven't done a show since uh, Neil Turbin. And that was yeah, last exactly. year. When I was think, that? Right? I don't know, Neil was awesome. Year. Neil is a super nice dude. That was before yeah. I went to LA, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Did you actually ever get to do a show with him yet? Or, or whatever happened with that? Three. You Oh, you did three already? Oh, wow. Yes. I in no LA, in, I think it's yeah. Was it October? I think October. Yeah. How'd they go? Well, one one <laughs> was uh, where was it? Some kind of really weird outdoor festival, and one was in Whiskey A Go Go, and one was so called backyard show, which was, I mean, if I'm really honest, the whole trip was worthless. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, there man. was re- there was. There was barely nobody there, and you know, but I got to play whiskey, and that was, of course, super cool. So. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Yeah, I wonder, if, I wonder if like playing the whiskey is like losing its luster because, I mean, I'm born and raised in California, and like I yeah. could give a rat's ass about the whiskey a go go. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it just doesn't. <laughs> it has like a completely different, like realm to it than it once did it used to be this place like motley crew and all these huge bands that's that was their like spot but now you know it's like for the heavy metal and you know especially heavy metal in la i can speak probably for the la bands because i've recorded them and recorded them in my studio i know they're my friends of mine and they're like the upcoming generation of younger heavy metal guys they don't fucking play there right you know it's like it's like completely changed i mean it's not like they would want to it's just that they don't really like to to me their their whole stick has been more like pay to play for um younger bands they don't really like try to holster up some a a sort of music scene wow well timo that's one thing that you want to talk about too is pay to play because you just recently posted a bunch of stuff about that on facebook yeah i mean pay to play uh well i'm not doing that I'm no, I know. I no, I don't think any any band should really do it. I, you know, I mean, no, if you want to if you want to get on those big shows, it's, most bands don't have that choice of not to do that. But it, it's it's yeah. pointless, you know. I think you it's have wrong. the two. I think it's you have the you have the two areas of it. There's like the pay to play, and then there's buy in. So like right. like it's like I I feel like they're completely two different things because like in L.A. where you have pay to play gigs, kind of they don't technically say you're paying they make you sell a certain amount of tickets they put you on this like you know they're like the government all of a sudden they're like you know like here if you don't sell this many then you know you got to pay the front of house guy they don't want to lose any money because they don't want to take a risk on any bands and then the bigger bands they want people to pay for their luxuries in a sense like You know, they, you buy in that basically pays for X names bus, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So like they're, 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 you know, rolling at ease. They're kind of doing you a solid, I, I, I can see it on, we always have to look at things with both perspectives of where you're going and what you're trying to do, because sometimes those things like a buy-in might actually do something for a band um, that's smaller and that they Mm -hmm. need that exposure and we're in a different time of, in the world now where record labels and stuff, are, it's completely different. So, you know, maybe that's not so bad. Pay to play is terrible. I don't, I don't agree with it. I think the, the venues should be trying to holster live music instead of pushing it away. Right. Because 
like there's an, there there really is no strong music scene in the United States anymore. Like like other than like maybe some of the indie like the indie rock stuff might still have a little something going on. But like in heavy metal, there's only so many bands. Like I could count them. I can name them off the top of my head after like five fucking rips mm. that I still know that that there's just not a lot of uh, uh, enough bands. And it's a lot of it is because it's like really hard to book a show. You know, you have to go through this mm. thing. Then you got to wait three months between shows, yada, yada. But anyway, yeah, that shit is uh, you got to look at it as is it could be good for a band. It could be bad for a band. I personally, I don't have any money to spend on anything like that. So like, I'm trying, I'm just trying to pay all the bills that I have. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> right. like that's enough, yeah. right? Like yeah. we all have bills. So it's like, you want to add another fucking thing on by going and like paying to play some fucking venue that had prestige 40 years ago. Who knows? Yeah. Now Timo, what's your take on that? Well, do we have any visitors? Actually, yes, we do. Uh, some of them are from my show, <laughs> but uh, uh, James is here. Um, he says yeah. uh, weed is not legal in Tennessee. <laughs> and uh, Robert, Gar- <laughs> Robert Garcia, a good friend of mine, he's here. And uh, Lou Mavs, he's here as well. He's watching. And Mitch- Mick Watkins, he's a very cool guy. Yeah. He just uh, His band, Wild Ride, just released their new EP. Yeah, so he says, what's up, Trevor? Mick is my oh, this, oh, this He says, uh, Haunt Wild Ride in 2022. Yeah. Oh, these guys professional musicians uh mick, mick Watkins is a professional musician yeah. i would say yeah. you know what yes. it, you know what it means yes of course uh, what does it mean what does it mean i mean yeah. that's that's like what you guys are doing i mean you, you know yeah, you, that means you don't you have earn, a, you, you earn a living from music that's right what yeah. it means mm-hmm. if yeah. you don't you a, earn a, living, a nine to five job you, you yeah then you're an amateur yeah which is yeah i, I mean the, the, it's, it's really this, it, I, this day and age, this, I think it's, a hard, it's way harder to be a professional musician because... Yeah, but this is not what this earn. show is about. This show is about professional musicians, right? How to make it, or if you can make it. Right. right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. let's talk about that. Yeah, let's All do right. it. So, I mean, Wayne, you are the boss here, so you should also direct this a bit, I think. Well, I was. I was trying to direct you to <laughs> yeah. go off of what he was talking about, the pay, pay to play thing. And that leads to professional musicians as well, because, you know, I'm sure, you know, there, there's some musicians that still have to do that. I mean, I have I have never even I've never done that. No, I know you never done it, but th- you just got offered that not too long ago. Right. And you turn it down, obviously. Well, it wasn't exactly pay to play. They, they offered mm-hmm. a fee, you know, but it right. wasn't a very good one. Right. I mean, pay to play means that you actually pay money. You don't mm-hmm. get right. anything. Yeah, I've I've done it once. And that was yeah, but it. this guy has actually offered yeah. ridiculous money, mm. and that so, that started me on this. When I started really thinking about all the shows I've done, which are like more than four thousand in my career, yeah, yeah. fifty five countries, and then I started to ca- calculate. For example, when you play in Sao Paulo, six and a half thousand people, when the tickets are like twenty bucks, you get the point. Right. Somebody's making a lot of money. And I never remember getting more than like a couple of thousand grand for the show. I don't remember this. Yeah. So then I started really to, because I've been sort of managing myself lately. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing all the work myself, which is okay, but it's a lot of work. Right. And organizing <laughs> a imagine. tour yourself and, you know, everything. But it's, I like that because then, you know, I think it's very good. And then all the streaming thing happened with you know Spotify, and then I started. Last three days I've been studying that only that, right? And I start barely start an understanding how they, for example, calculate royalties, right? Spotify. I talked to Jens this morning, and he calls it Speedify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're the lowest paying uh, digital platform out there, right? Yeah. So if we take the streaming. Which I love, by the way. I think mm. it's a fantastic way to, you know. Yeah. I I see what you have behind your. Yeah, I, I love the physical stuff, and, and yeah, yeah, too. me too. I'm not saying yeah, that too. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that this is uh, now more than sixty percent of music streaming, right. right? So and it's going up. Yeah, of course. And, you know. and also the music industry is going up. 
which was a surprise for me. Mm. So the revenues and everything, the, the money is bigger. Yeah. Which is kind of funny when you think about the, all this complaining. You know, complaining what with the with the Spotify thing? Yeah, this is only one. I mean, it's all of them. And, you yeah. know, it's the entire. Uh, it's just the internet in yeah. general because it it makes it everything is so tangible now. You don't have to actually physically own it, and you could go from one band to the next, to the next, to the next down the line. And that is part of what I think is a, a big problem with. Um, how they how they uh, calculate how they pay bands because it's just very it's it's challenging to even be relevant in 2020 because of how much there is for you to listen to right. you know it's not as fun anymore to find a band I find like you know it's like back in the days you'd, you'd have your your buddy be like oh check this band out and you're like oh this is sick and then you had to go buy it or like kind of feel awkward and be like hey man can I like borrow that cassette so i could record it you know what i mean it's, <laughs> right. a, it's, a, it's like a full-on different world but you know i'm finding that i'm getting more physical sales now more than ever but right. that's because i'm literally selling them myself so i right. see them right. going out like band camp for me is the future for any independent musician if you have not been using band camp you're gonna have a hard time really making money off album sales it balances it balances the scale because mm -hmm. instead of getting a dollar per record from a label you can now get 10 you're right. going to make way more money selling it yourself and since distribution if you think about record stores there's no sam goody there's no warehouse all the things we grew up you know going to every friday when we got paid those are like almost irrelevant now now it's mom and pop shops catering to like you know vintage records to you know having the newest of whatever color edition you know right. we have one here in town we have a great record store in fresno called raging records this dude has been catering to punk heavy metal since the 90s i grew up going to his store and it's it's like to me it's better than any of the corporate places and but anyway, what I'm saying is like most professional musicians now, I'm seeing a lot, a lot of people turning to Bandcamp and a lot of people turn to me to ask how I did it. When mm -hmm. I started Haunt, I was my, my previous band, Beastmaker, was signed to, you know, Lee Dorian's label, Rise Above, which mm -hmm. was yep. a subsidiary label of Metal Blade at the time. I think he was, he was distributing through Metal Blade for the United States. I don't know what he does now, but anyway... I was like, you know, I thought that was going to be the next year for me because of the bands he has and, and whatnot. And, you know, I started realizing, I was like, man, there is like no money coming in from, you know, like you get paid your upfront fee and that basically that's that, you know, right. it's, it's a strange deal. Like now when I look at it, I wouldn't, I would have done things a little differently, but I think when you're just starting you kind of have to get fucked just so you can like learn something. You're like, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You know, but you know, it's only, it's only for so long before you're, you're free. And I'm not saying that Lee did any of that to me, but just what I'm saying is, is that on my next project, I was like, I, I knew about Bandcamp. A lot of people were turning me to it. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to see what happens if I don't have any physical product at all. And I just stick this EP that I did for Haunt, Luminous Eyes, which is my debut. Mm. And I got paid, I got more money in that first week than I'd ever made in Beastmaker, my previous mm. band. Oh, and wow. that was a big eye opener to me because I was like, I didn't even have any marketing. The only, the, like only one dude really put me mm. on a, a nice tier, Fenris from Dark Throne. He has that album of the week blog, you know, that he does. Okay. He put me as number one album of the week that week. And the next thing you know, my old band done. And now I'm haunt and oh, wow. completely. How many, how many CDs did you sell? I didn't, I didn't sell any CDs. I didn't have any physical product. So that first week. But you, you, I, you just said first, that you, you, in Bantam, you, you just said that you sold yes. CDs. No, you, no, selling digital, just digital. 
Okay. How Digital much money you made? So that first week I made $5,000. Okay. Accumulatively. So let's just put it this way. Since, and, and since this is for professional musicians, just so you can get an understanding of what Bandcamp has done for me. So I started using the platform in late 2017. I'm talking winter. Um, and to this date right now, I've almost made $300,000. Wow. So, and I'm not signed to a label. I don't have any like strings attached to me. I do mostly everything myself just because like I said, being, being on a label from the past, I found it, it was going to be very hard to make a living and I had to have another job and it was really tiring, especially as, you know, as you get older, I'm 40 now. Um, but in my thirties, I was just like, man, I'm fucking worn out. I was, you know, you're, you're playing on the weekend. You're going to work during the day. You're trying to, you know, write, have rehearsals, all that shit. That's hard. Right. That is like, <laughs> but that's what the majority of people are doing. People that yep. I know, yep. people more, more of my age are, that's the challenge they face is like, how the fuck am I going to do music? If I, cause like a lot of bands you get signed. I can, I can name 20 off the top of my head. I know what all they, every single one of them does for a day job. Right. And they're, some of them are big. They're playing headline, you know, they're headlining heavy metal festivals in Europe. Right. Yeah. T Timo, so, you, don't, you don't have uh, any of your stuff on Bay Camp, right? No, I've never done that. I mean, yeah, why not? Because I don't have to. Well, it would help. No, it doesn't help at all for me. I mean, I, I'm all, the only thing that, I speak about my perspective in things. Mm. Yeah. And if you take this Spotify thing, like I said, I started to really study that. And now I know, for example, that they don't pay straight directly to the artists at all. Right. They only pay to the uh, copyright uh, owners' rights, you know, who owns the rights. Mm -hmm. So that means record companies and publishers normally. Right. And when I started back in 84, and when we signed the first deals, I mean, I didn't even read them. I remember that. I'm like, okay, this is like, okay, it's a record deal. Cool, I signed right. it. And now, of course, when it all comes back to me. Right. And, and, and like Spotify is calculating its royalties. It's a, it goes to the pool, big pool. And it depends a lot about how many listeners you have per month. Right. So those who have the most listeners, like 500,000, 500 million to say like the biggest names like whoever in pop music and stuff those get the most of the money of course yeah yeah but i didn't know that i only knew the because they had to at some point they had to calculate they had to say some figure which is not even that it's not based on reality really it's just mm -hmm. a figure right but the, the 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 real thing is that i know for example that black diamond has 20 million streamings wow the biggest hits they have around 20 million, and mm. so there was a 600,000 listeners per month. Wow, but it's nothing compared to Eminem or you know, right? Of course, or Metallica or, or whatever, yeah, right. Metallica. So that means that Spotify is really only for the big names yeah. if you want to get real money there from there, yeah. And then you know, I, I really started to think about my career and all these stupid, <laughs> stupid uh contracts that I signed. and and, uh, and I talked to some people also in the industry. I talked to Stratovers Record Company in Germany, Edel. And I got infos. And, and I just really, um, well, I, I started this, I had this idea in October that, because at that time I was, I was fucking pissed off Spotify. Mm -hmm. I'm not anymore, by the way. Right. So you're going to stay I, on Spotify. You're not going to take uh, Neil Young's. I'm, uh... I'm, I'm going to take that later. But. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I, I was thinking like, okay, why can't I have my own Spotify? You know? Right. Mm -hmm. So I made this kind of a paper drawing, like a homepage with like app and OS app and an Android app. And, and I, I'm going to sell my music there. And then uh, I was talking to my brother who was a web designer, how to do that. And he said, it's kind of complicated. Right. right. Yeah. And then I met a guy in Dallas, Yanni, who was living there. And he introduced me to a guy who has been working for Nokia. Mm -hmm. And he was working for Nokia Symbian team, which was like touchscreen. They were right. making media player. 
Okay. And Apple is still has they have to pay the Nokia to ah. touch screen. Mm. These guys are in court every week for wow. everything. So so then I sent this drawing to him, and he was like, Yeah, actually, that makes sense. Let's do it. So okay, this this is cool. So ever since last October, we've been, or he's been doing this team, this coding and thing. And it's really complicated. It's not that easy as you think. Yeah. So because he showed me the schematics and it's like fucking Star Wars. You know, it's, <laughs> like, it's like a Death Star. It looks like Death Star. Yeah. Anyway, that is then, that is my plan. Then, then I'm going to sell all my music there. You know? So you're going to have your own Team All Talky pod. Um, I mean, uh, app. No, it's it's called Bitminer. That's the company. Okay, so it's going to be and under it, that. Yeah, it, it's that company, and and we are. What well, I because I told him that I want to reverse what Spotify is doing. Oh, okay. You know, and that means that we are inviting other bands and artists as well. Oh, all right, good. And then I got to know, for example, that Apple and Google are taking thirty percent of the whole revenue, right? Just because of the app stores, right? have nothing to do with it but just that yeah well apple has the courtesy of um, giving only 50 percent until you earn one million dollars oh how nice after, uh, yeah, yeah how nice <laughs> after that is after that is 30. so but this is like a media platform it's not just music it's going to be books videos everything oh, okay all right under this name and there's going to be quality control something that spotify doesn't have you know all right. I just got to well, notice that my computer's going to shut down. I just hope it don't shut down now. <laughs> Continue. Welcome to technology. Yeah. Yeah, so that was like my idea back then. And then I started to book in my own tour, actually two. Now, and I, of course, I get help. I have help. People right. I trust, so they're helping me out. But it's so complicated because just when you book the routing, then one says, oh, can we do this? And oh, everything is changed. <laughs> right. So, but... I mean, I, I think that I am on the opposite side of this, that I think the internet is a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but of course think, it is. I mean, oh, I we're find... on the same page. I, I, without Bandcamp is like internet based. Like without it, I wouldn't yeah. be talking to anybody right now. Yeah. I don't really have a pro, like, like I've voiced some opinions about, about Spotify, but it's, it's more or less just because I just don't really like, I'm just not into that kind of culture for me. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm, I'm just different. I like to have physical product. And so, you know, on Bandcamp, that's offered because at Wayne, as you know, you've probably seen all, all my stuff, you know, I manufacture all my own vinyl. The yeah, there you go. Right, yeah. right there. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, you know, so I do, I, I do all the manufacturing myself, ship it out of here. And to me that, that part excites me a lot more. Like I don't get excited. Like when I see my Spotify statistics or anything, but like seeing the person's name that bought it, shipping it to them personally, having this like interaction with them through the internet, that's an amazing thing. And that's the side that like, I'm trying to stay on like everything kind of like I'm realistic in the eye in the fact that those things, Spotify, Apple, Google play title, all of them, we could go down the list and list and list of them. Um, they're here to stay. And to me, it just alienates too many people, in my user base, because that's somebody that might buy it, you know, they might come to a show or buy a shirt or whatever, you know, not having it on, them to, on there for them to listen to. I'm just like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like, so yeah, they pay shitty and everything, but it's like, they're kind of like the IRS. You just kind of have to deal with this shit, you know, like, <laughs> right. It's just, it's, it's there. Is it amazing? I don't, I don't really care for it. I'm going to buy, I'm going to go to the band's show or go to the band's band camp page and buy their vinyl, buy a t-shirt and support them directly before I go and, and stream it. Because again, it's like, I'm not into playlists. I like, I'm still kind of like an album guy. And you obviously, I mean, look at all the fucking albums you oh, have back that's, there. That's fake. That's a green you know? screen speak. It's fake. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, you know what I mean? It's like, I still like to go put the record on and I have a two-year-old and he's he's going to be three soon. And he's really interested in records. Like yeah. he's going and grabbing a record and wanting to put it on. <laughs> and and whizzing think, across the room, right? I think, there's, <laughs> I think there is a huge, huge market for bands and 
musicians to launch a professional career using a platform like Bandcamp that puts you from artist directly to your fan. And, you know, it creates, it creates a, um, it creates a relationship. I can't tell you how many people I have in my corner supporting me because of Bandcamp. It's a very impressive tool that's out there in the music world for you don't have to sell your stuff through a secondary platform anymore. It's yeah. right there. You make what you want to have in your, you know, at your house or your warehouse or whatever you got. And you can, you know, it's a for it's a form of survival to where you don't get big record label advances or whatever you heard of the times of old. I I'm too relatively young for that. So I, you know, cause the, it, you know, I was born in 81. So I obviously wasn't like touring the world and making records when I was five, you know, but, but, you know, I'm in the era now. Like, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) I'm in the era where like Napster really started coming through. Like everybody was just illegally downloading and nobody made any money. At least now they make something. And I agree. And I agree with Timo. I think like, like what he was saying there, he's going to have his own platform for this. I think we're going to see way more of that in the future where bands have their own apps. Yeah. You know, you can download the fucking what, Yingbei Momstein app and like, it's like, you know, oh, there's no, gonna be not that all <laughs> this, there's going to be all <laughs> this stuff. You could, you could like buy a, buy a trip. Hopefully with a, be- hopefully with a better you- sound. He'll, he'll, send you, he'll send you his Ferrari wheel or something. I saw that's like actually, a Ferrari, that brings me, he had a Ferrari that brings me steering this, driver. He had, a, he had his Ferrari you know, steering, steering wheel for sale at a show one time. Well, those Ferraris are, they are copies, by the way. So Really? <laughs> but, anyway, you know, I mean, it comes to the production thing here, exactly what you said. That right. I come from that time when we still had so-called record advances yeah. from record companies. Yeah, and, and that means that we can actually go to a nice studio and record the record, and we spend like one to two months sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you could kind of like you know, and, uh, you're, you could afford the. Can land. I talk, please? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So then you know we got like uh, the the best we had like five hundred thousand dollars at once, right? You know, yeah, and that's like back in two thousand five. And normally, most it was I I save these figures because I don't really care. Right. But to keep it as a secret, but for like elements, we have like a budget of $200,000. But yeah, same for the August and choir, but stuff like that. Mm. Mostly, you know, we spend like one month to two months making the record. And that's my point. I refuse to do what I call bedroom recording. Right. You know, mm. I really want to have, you, you listen to any of anything I've done, it has a good sound, except yeah. the first track of ours. That's a horrible sound. I thought it was cool. Uh, it was done in three days. <laughs> anyway, that, you know, um, so now we don't have this, you know, yeah. there is yeah. no money because the whole thing is, is really way down. Yeah. So you have to be really creative to swim in there with this thing, you know, and that my platform, it's not even mine, it's ours. It's this bit mine. There's many people working as a team, which is always a good thing. Yeah. So if it goes well, because like I said, I, and we want to reverse Spotify. As I was going to so, say, like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. We're going to pay out 70% of the money. Okay. To the, to the artists, mm-hmm. you know, and that's different. Yeah. And this goes straight to the artists. So whoever comes there, we, we offer the platform, all the things, all the development of like six, seven, eight months. It's not easy to make this app. It's not like just, you go to the fucking like Atari and you do it. <laughs> it's right. like that. It's really complicated with the payment systems and everything. And it's the territory is the world. Right. So, and, and the corporate society payments and everything. And you have to calculate a lot of this. So it, it's really difficult, but I don't care because at the end, it is the only way how I can be in direct contact to my fans and those who like my music. Yeah. You know? Yeah, There's and it's no good that somebody way. like you, an actual musician, is doing yeah. this because you know the people that run Spotify. He's not a musician. Nice Gothard cup, by the way. Um, so, I really you know, like I, I like the I like Spotify. I like yeah. the app. I I I don't have a huge problem with it. I I don't use I use Amazon. Uh, now I have a problem. But 
But yeah, now you, of course you, now you do. No, now you know, tell you, now you know the behind you the scenes. <laughs> no, no, let me tell you why I have a problem. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out my music from Spotify. God the, but that, damn it. But that, that means only my solo records. I have no control of the Stuttgart stuff. Oh, well, nobody's listening if, to those anyway. if, I, if I would have, <laughs> I would take it out. But yeah. only because of the payment system. Right, yeah. It's the only reason for why I'm doing this. I have no ideological reasons to do that at all. So, right. which, and, makes, and, which, and, which a lot of people should be doing, you know, to either make him force him to pay the artists more money, you know, because like Trevor says, he likes like, the band I, camp. Because I don't like to use the word force. I don't think people want to. I, I don't think they like to, you know, that we tell them what to do. No, of course not. So I think it that does. in this, yeah, yeah. I mean. So I really think that in this, um, I was in the thought here because it's, um, I just think that there's a big future in this when you, when you yeah. make it really good. Yeah. And then you can actually unite your fans, you know. And of course, we're going to offer also uh, physical stuff to my own company, the other company. Yeah. So that this is kind of network of things. I was going to ask, like, you know, because like how Trevor, he loves Bandcamp because he can sell his physical stuff there. And will your, the Bitminer thing, sure. will it, you know, uh, co- um, you know, put those two things together? You'll have uh, a link to like, you know, where you can buy the physical CD. And sure. The record. And then, it, but then it's going to be the, quant- the quantities are like so small. Yeah. You know, when, whenever I make an announcement that there's going to be a new record and, and I say nothing about the physical stuff and it's like, I want to have CD. Yeah. Okay, man. I ship it to you. Anybody else? You know, that's what I mean. It's like you know, we talk about maybe two to five hundred in the world. Right. It's really rare. So, but it's gonna be there. But what I'm meaning that streaming is, and it's gonna be even bigger. You know. Yeah. Um, and and some of these like like um, these concert companies, they also do these three hundred and sixty deals, mm-hmm. where they want to have a piece of the touring income as well. Right. And this is just, you know, when I see how much they actually pay for the artists and bands since 50s, it's like sick. Yeah. You know? But I'm not in a crusade here. I'm just doing things for myself. You know, mm-hmm. and if somebody's going to come there, they can send us the stuff and we listen to it. And, you know, but it's not for everybody. This is not Spotify in that sense. You don't find there like 500 million bands. Right. But we do pay out what Spotify would pay, should pay. Mm-hmm. So my original idea, my horrible drawing. Do you have this drawing? My own reverse. <laughs> I probably have it somewhere. I send it to Ed. I can put it somewhere. So, um, and then, you know, it all started from that. And I call yeah. it my reverse Spotify. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my problem with Spotify is that now when I'm taking out my stuff, mm. I cannot listen to it anymore. <laughs> how, can I, how, can, how can I listen to Spotify at the same time and criticize them? Yeah. That's hypocritical. It is. It is. And then when I don't own any CDs or CD player, I can listen to music because then I can listen to also Apple or YouTube. Mm-hmm. The only thing I might be able to listen is the free version of Spotify. Right. But even then, I would be sort of, you know, participating to what I call crime. I rip my CDs to my phone. So I could take my music, the, the bands that I love. I, I mean, my iTunes library yeah. is awesome. And I prefer it because it's, I always buy a phone with a big hard drive so I could put a ton of music on it. And that's yeah. what I use. I don't need internet. Because sometimes when you're on the road, you're going to hit places... There is no internet. Then what are you? Then what are you listening to? Nothing. Yeah, but the Apple is the same. Yeah, they're all, they all those. They pay shit, so I can't listen to any of them when I go on this way. Yeah. And how can I have Spotify app if I take my stuff out from that? Mm. This it's no way. <laughs> so all these these three days I've been thinking, what the fuck? I mean, I can't listen to music anymore. Right. Because I only listen to Spotify. You know. As, as, a, as a platform and, and I have like 600 songs in the playlist or my liked songs that they say <laughs> so I, I really I guess I, I, I really have to think 
Yeah. What's the rule? This. Are you gonna just do Spotify or like pretty much all of them? I have to do everything, of course. You have to do everything. Why you just put those albums on? They are there. I know, and then you just put them on like a like last year. Yeah, but I paid for it because I, know, I was my, take my, my, I had manager at that time, and he sort of taught me to right, do that. Right. Then. Reluctantly, yeah. I mean, I I spent years resisting that. Right. And now I'm gonna just take it off. And of course, they don't understand that there are many, many people who actually bought the physical CD. Right. It's like a lot of Stratomars fans. I mean, we sold like one or four million copies. So all those are relevant, you know. Yeah. So I think those people, in my eyes, are okay to use Spotify. Mm-hmm. You know. And in any case, I think it's okay to use Spotify. You know, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying that I'm going to take my music out from all those streaming platforms. And if somebody wants to listen to my stuff, the solo stuff, or the future stuff, they have to co- go to the Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Yeah. And that offers like a really high quality audio. You're going to do like CD level. That's good. Yeah. Audio. Okay. All right. So good. Yeah. That is really. Because that's, that's the one like, thing that really lacks with, with the digital stuff. It's the, the sound quality. Like we, like Trevor was saying when we first started. I have a, here, question. Just... I have a question for Timo real quick. Go Are ahead. you going to sell? So on your, um, could you say the name of the 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 app again? Bit, so I can't quite catch. Bit, bit Bitminer. It's a it's a company from Dallas. B I T. Bitminer. B I T. Bitminer. Okay. Bitminer. Okay. So on Bitminer, are will your fans have the ability to buy the digital download yes. of your album? Okay. Yes. I think that's important to make clear to people listening to it that would be interested in Bitminer, that you're actually selling the digital album there as well. Because again, I think it's important for like dudes like me, if say there's no CD or whatever, if I wanted to go buy it, put it on my phone and and I'm I'm traveling, I'm on an airplane, I don't have internet, whatever the case may be, I have access to it through some sort of library. There's been a lot of talk with the CEO of the company the sample guy was this Nokia guy. Hello, you're watching this probably. Um, that should it be downloadable or streamable? Right. And I'm like, streamable, streamable. And he says, downloadable, downloadable. I said, both, both, you know. Yeah. Why not? Why can't it be both? You know? Why not? Yeah, exactly. That works but we good. are still we are still finding this concept, you know, we're talking about the things and kind of seeing the bigger picture there. And, that, that there is an audience and, and and if they really need if they want to buy that stuff they have to come there there's, right. you, you don't get it also because there's also, also going to be a copyright like Spotify has mm-hmm. so, so you buy the, the file you download the file or stream it and then you download it and then you can't listen to it outside of your devices it's not possible to do yeah. so that means that um, it's not going to be in YouTube Unless it's somebody really <laughs> makes a horrible audio, you know, through speakers <laughs> and then records it, and, and that nobody wants that. Right. Yeah. So that's Tim what out. I mean. You know. Yeah. Do you do you manufacture vinyl records for your releases? Yes, we will have those two. Okay. No, I was just that's, asking. Yeah, yeah. That, that was just a question. Yeah, right. it's. I think it's a good question because those okay. are like you know they're getting up. You know people. People are buying more of those, but it's still nothing compared to the streaming. I mean, the figures are small. So if you want well, to earn a and, living with this, and this is the point of this podcast, is that you gotta be really creative in there. Yeah. Um, and the prices of uh, vinyl are even going up now. So how much longer could vinyl sales stay? I, I don't know. And I'm I still love, saying I, I love vinyl records. It's, it's really, I mean, I I'm, I buy vinyl like yeah. every week. Really? So, well, for me, yeah. for me, well, I guess so, all the money you're making. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I like, I like, I. There's something magical about a vinyl record, man. I there, there really is. Like, you know, I, you don't really notice it. See, like my turntable broke. Re- like I hadn't had it in over a year. Yeah, no. my needle broke, and I just was like, "Fuck it." I was in the studio, I was super busy. I wasn't really listening to stuff inside, and like I said, then my son started going. 
Papa, what, you know, he wants to know what all this shit is in the living room, right? You know, there's a vi- you know, collection of vinyl and a record player there and nothing, you know, we don't mess with it. And then, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm going to get a needle, new needle, put it on and show him this. And it's been like a, like I said, like now it's like a religious thing for us. Like every day he goes, grabs whatever, and we put it on. And I like it so much more. I feel so more connected, so much more connected to the music than when I do digit, like listening to it digitally. It's so different. Yeah. I just put yeah. it on. It's, it's great. I think that that shit is like, that is my favorite thing. And uh, like the, the color variants too. It's like a, it's a, it's like magic. You're like, how's, how is this, how, <laughs> like, how's this piece of plastic making me feel like this right now? Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. definitely more geared like, you know, I like Wayne, you, you've been, we, we've been, you know, we've known each other for a while now yeah. and you know that I'm, I'm, I'm big on like, you know, the, the, like having records, having tapes and, you know, also like just branding yourself like how I did you know I kind of kind of have like a completely DIY thing I have my studio to manufacturing to you know I have a rad group of artists that do my stuff you know like that's been big for me like clothes clothing the clothing you know the amount of like t-shirts I sell is is incredible so and that's that's due to you know like having you know branded my band correctly with with what I do, just making a really cohesive thing and really geared towards, you know, like I said, like the vinyl records, the cassettes and that, and that vibe, that's where I really try to push my customers to have that experience. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been pretty good for me. Like I wouldn't really have it any other way. And I feel, I feel so much closer to the, the microphone. (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's good that's good stuff right there i eat a banana every day that's like the best superfood on the planet how, how is your digital sales like with the download and sales from uh, bandcamp. on bandcamp or yeah. where bandcamp ba- bandcamp is so when i do a release i can't give you a completely correct number right. but i will tell you it's one time i'm just going to give you an example of this so I did a record last year called Flash or in 2020, sorry, called Flashback. And I actually left it off commercial digital pages entirely for Mm. one year to see if I would have more digital downloads from Bandcamp. If I didn't have it out there, I was so right. When Mm. I look at all of my albums that I have, I have several up there. And then, of course, my old catalog, my previous band, Beastmaker, um, that record has the most digital downloads. Wow. So people will go in and buy it if they can't get it. Right. That's that's a fact. If they want it bad enough, they're going to pay $9.99 for a digital download. You know, it's like just so they could listen to it or whatever. But again, you know, I think we're in another uh, area quickly talked about fans. Fans want to support the bands directly now. And Bandcamp is a way to do that. And I don't work for Bandcamp. I mean, now, I, have sure no about that? <laughs> I have no, I have no, I mean, I give them a lot of money a year. They get 10, they're like the church. They get right. 10%, you yeah, know? Yep, get, yeah. so, and I think if you don't hit a certain threshold, like he, Timo was saying earlier, Apple has a, a threshold oh, yeah. where you sell a million and then you get to a new percentage rate. Well, Bandcamp does the same thing. You got to sell a certain amount and then they put you, they're like, oh, you've sold this much for us and you made us this yeah. much. Now we, you know, it's cheaper. Apple has this thing that you have until you sell one million dollars worth of stuff. That's ri- that's ridiculous. It's, that's a it, lot. It's it's <laughs> it's, fi- it's fifteen percent, and then after that, thirty. I can just say that if the, all the streamings that I have for my song that I wrote, mm. I would be a millionaire. Yeah, you know, and I should be. I know. I know my worth in that. So the only thing I can do just is to sort of start again. Which is not really possible. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I do have my plans, and I have something I've never done before. I have plans for a year, plans for two years, plans for five years, ten even, twenty. So, I, I am very fixed in that. I do have it, and and I never had this before. I mean, I just played the, the tours, and <laughs> we never thought about these things. I mean, Jens right, did. Right. He's always yes has always been really, really intelligent in this, and 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 got the tool. 
Mm-hmm. And, and then also that um, whenever I get really uh, paranoid about these conspiracy theories and everything, I just talk to Jens because he's super cool. It, yeah. is, it just gets me back. And all this, you know, uh, having the chip in the, you know, that collects your thoughts kind of, you know, this totally <laughs> stupid <laughs> things. I mean, it's kind of, and I, I really think that as, as my personal opinion, right. People should have an ability to choose, the right to choose. Right. Yeah. In everything, you know. And if you if you need to open the can of worms of that Neil Young thing, do we have to? Yeah, why not? I open that can that of he, worms. He has the right to do that. Of course he does. And so has Rogan. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I, I yeah. never oh. I've never even I never even knew about this guy. So I I, I kind of look a couple of episodes and I think what he is doing is he's actually inviting many people there around right. the subject, you know. Right. Regarding vaccines, pros and cons, anti and you know, for. So I mean that's that's good, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And this whole coronavirus shit has been going on for far too long. Yeah. We pay so much attention to this and that is not a good thing, you know. Mm. And now in Europe they're starting to actually remove the restrictions finally. So yeah. all of them. Yeah. Even in Finland, which is, uh, I'm surprised about that. Oh, wow, really? So tomorrow I go to Norway because I'm going to record bass with Yari. We have a new song. And I just, because I'm double vaccinated, I don't, I don't need to take tests. Like I say, that's the only reason why I took the vaccines, that I can tour. Yeah, because you can't, you can't come here and do anything without being... No, Excellent. and I can't. I can't go to South American tour without that. So yeah, yeah. that was the choice, and I don't think I would have taken that vaccine. Yeah, you know, but I chose to take it, and this this decision has to be valid, I think, for everyone. You know, right? Yeah, and I really think there's something really, as my personal opinion, something really black and dark. People are made forced to take this. Mm-hmm. I don't like this. I really don't like that. Yeah. But then I see these fucking discussions on Facebook about <laughs> Neil Young and, and all this. It's like they are, they are just talking about the same thing. They don't hear each other. People. Right. Right. They say, why is Young doing this? I said, well, he has the right. Mm. You know, yeah, but he, he's like, he says, if they re- don't remove Rogan, I leave. He, he never said that. Mm. He just said, they can have either me or him. Right. That's his right. He can choose to do that. And then every action in this planet has consequences. You know, you said out original cause and it has an effect. That's for sure. No matter what you do. Yeah. The way you go to sleep in the, in the night and you wake up in the morning, hopefully. <laughs> that kind of thing. So he did this and he can afford it as right. well. Yeah. You know, it's not. Yeah, they, they both can. So. Yeah, they are not, you know, economically tied to that. Yeah. Um, but I, I really think that people should be free and that they really don't like to tell to be told what to do. Right. No. Which is what it really comes down to. I think but, so. Yeah. I really well, I mean, think so. But you know. I don't know. I can, I'm going to add something. I think there's something really odd to me about the Neil Young Spotify thing. I think like Neil Young has some other hidden agenda uh, it's a reptile no, no just about <laughs> no just about where he's his streaming music's going to like i feel like he's i've read somewhere that he's, he has investment in a streaming company yeah yeah and well he had a he had a streaming thing like a long time or not a streaming thing but um some kind of he had he remember that he made that that um mp3 player well, well like whatever years the ago case may be, i just feel like this whole thing is like uh he's there's there's something else behind it other than just this joe rogan thing because i feel like joe rogan is like phil donahue he has people just on of all kinds of they could be right. super strange and unusual and then like something you know really serious and right it's just the show it just the show it all over i don't he's even said he doesn't have an agenda he just has conversations with people right which- and that that to me is where it's like I'm you, you know I have to agree with 
some of what Joe Rogan says on that, because like he's saying it to the people is like, I am just having conversations. That's what I do. Right. That is all he does. There's no reason to, for Neil Young to be like, Joe Rogan can't be on Spotify because blah, blah, blah. It's the people that he's talked to that has those opinions. Right. He didn't say that. He's not, he never, he's not he never saying. said that. He didn't say that. He said they can have either me or him. That's a decision. No, I know that, but like he's saying, like he, they, they're mad at Rogan because of you know because uh, they had that that one guy. I don't remember what his name was, but the it one that a, said he, it, it was a couple doctors talking about right. that. Yes. That have one of them is one of the most published in his field. I can't remember their names. Was so. it called? Was called Mengele. Yeah. Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, no. you know, there was a guy in Germany about 50, 60 years ago who tried to control things. Yes, yes. I don't think we want to go there. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we're not. No, yeah. we'll get. I'll have a. a yeah, no. <laughs> what I mean uh, is, that, or, but, or was, I mean, you, you guys, you guys have a constitutional right to say whatever you want. Right. Right. That protects you. Or was Joe Rogan the scapegoat? to be like, we're not having music. It's like this thing that like, we want to remove ourselves now because of blah, blah, blah. And it's in, you see Spotify stock go down and yeah. now they're like, we're going to pay the, we're going to pay everybody more or something. I don't know what exactly to me it's, it's too much. And so far, like away from what I'm trying to do that I don't even like my, like right now I'm like putting a wall up to it because I'm like, <laughs> I don't care what's going on on Spotify. I don't care about any of this stuff i got my own shit to deal with and like you know hey we should also be for, for spotify for red seller review what? how about like 10 million i'm not taking 10, <laughs> 10 million bucks uh, yeah. <laughs> no i'm still on spotify uh actually i just put up no, a new, but, you know, my new ep just came on spotify if anybody searches rat cell review and friends you can uh find all of our cover songs that we did on there and we're it's on spotify and everything. i can't so, listen to it sorry i can't listen to spotify. well you can listen to it on spotify. i'll send it to you <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a weird that's, weird that's a weird one like literally if you're like it's only on spotify like you kind of like, you, like to me, you're I'd be like, oh, yourself I'm not going to listen to you because I can't go there. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. that person. Well, I can. I, can. I, can. Yes. I can. I can. Because if I take my stuff out, that would be a hypocritical. Yes, to listen to it. But I wonder, maybe Neil Young is going to be going against you. He's going to make his own bit minor. I think he's going to make his own podcast in Spotify. You think so? <laughs> it's it's very maybe possible. It <laughs> what I think, what I really like, I really like is that Spotify has to actually explain this now because of this. So yeah. They have to, they, they came out and, and they released some rules. Yeah. You know. And they have X. the right. I don't like the rules. I hate rules. I'm an anarchist. Well, basically. Yeah. Rules so, suck, but you know. Yeah. Some people need so, them. What yeah. are we saying? Daniel, Daniel Eck, the uh, CEO of Spotify said something interesting a couple of years ago or when people were complaining and like, I, I, I think it's good to take it back some, um, what was, you know, being said a couple years back, uh, Daniel Eck was telling, you know, bands were complaining because blah, blah, blah. They're not making this money. He said that you can't be a lazy artist anymore. Basically you have to put out like content constantly. You know, because like the rap, the rap artists, they just do singles only. You can't go buy their CD. And they're, he, you know, he's emphasizing, he's like, you want to make this work for you. You got to think of Spotify almost as Instagram. You're trying to build up your following through social media. And Spotify yeah. to me is kind of, is a form of social media. Yeah, pretty much. And, but so if you follow his schematic, I wonder if you would see success because there are artists out there, Billy Eilish and, and such Ariana, Ariana Grande, they're some of the most, yeah. they, they have some of the most users and their whole thing is Spotify. They, like physical is like non-existent in their, their realm. They don't have to go in and do an album. You know, they can go in and right. do a song or two exactly. and put it out and boom. Yeah. Sign up the times. The I mean, that's, you have to change with the times. That's what I think. Yeah, you know, yeah. The streaming streaming's here to stay, and hopefully, physical yeah. media is here to stay too. So, I think it will be. I think it will be. Of course, I. I mean, I, I recently I, I played this Eagle Heart song of our video, and it has like what forty million views. 
Yeah. And then suddenly came this Britney Spears toxic with 500 million views. And <laughs> then I catch up. I'm, I'm in the right, fucking wrong business here. <laughs> you know, I should be writing pop songs. You should That's be. what I should really do. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to book a ticket to LA and I, I'm going to live there until I make it. And then I see you in Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trevor's got some room there. I think you can sleep with the dog maybe on that, that blue chair back there. It's this fucking yeah. rabbit. It's not a dog. Yeah, That's a rabbit. rabbit. She's, she's, actually, <laughs> she's actually moved. She's now like laying on my sweatshirt on the ground. And I'm like, ah, so I'm going to have dog hair all over. What's, what's the name? What's the name? Her name's Stella. What's the, what's the name of the rabbit? <laughs> a banana. Yeah. Here she is for everybody to see. Mm. This is Thelma, my dog, the studio it? dog. Is it Chihuahua? Is it Chihuahua? Yeah, she's a Chihuahua. Mm -hmm. When I was in Los Angeles, I stayed at this promoter's home and he had eight Chihuahuas. Oh my God. I, I, was, I was constantly attacked by a, an army of Chihuahuas. He's crazy. They were fucking. Like, they were fucking me. Yappy, they really. They're, yappy. They're, yappy. <laughs> they're bastards, man. So I tried to go. Yappy. I tried to go to the toilet, and like eight of them attacked me. <laughs> I'm like fuck. <laughs> and I'm a big guy, and they're like you know fucking. It was super funny, and like eight chihuahuas. I've been attacked by an army of chihuahuas. That's a nice pop song. Right. There's your next hit right there. Army that's of chihuahuas. The name of my next. Yes, yeah, so it should be the name of somebody's band. Army of Chihuahuas. <laughs> yeah. I could definitely see that in like in like the Latin culture. There might already be one. It could be. Did you, did you see any of that down uh, in Mexico when you were there? No, no, no there, there is, <laughs> as far as I know. Not yet, anyway. When they will be now. There, there's these this. reggaeton bands. That there is this, like a, was, when I was in Dallas, there was this um, was this like a reggaeton band with, with uh, like um, um, hard rock stuff like yeah. Def Leppard and. What was it called? I saw the show actually. They're know. American guys, but yeah, they were like hilarious. So, um, oh, you talking about I, Steel Panther? No, no, they are actually some. So I thought we can do Stratoton, which is like reggaeton version of Stratoton. <laughs> oh God, no, don't do that. <laughs> but my artistic pride could never allow me to do that. Yeah, thank God. I can make a franchise, franchise, you know, like you know, I can <laughs> assemble bands. Yeah, you can take the songs and stuff. <laughs> I just take, you know, I pay to you guys like 0 0.003 cents per gig. Yeah, that, work. that works out. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Well, uh, to make so a long story short, I think mm -hmm. that the answer to the question of this podcast is yes, it is possible. It is possible. And the, these are two guys, two examples here Trevor with his, yeah. uh, with the Haunt band and uh, with his band camp. And we're going to try to get him on bit minor. <laughs> you can send and, uh, stuff. Yeah. And then uh, Timo, you know, with, with your, all your solo albums. And now you're working on this bit minor thing, which is going to be awesome. And I hope it really works out. And, you know, a lot of musicians come onto your platform too. So it's yeah, going to help them get, a lot as well. Yeah, oh. Exactly. And they get paid 70% around that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the way the, it should be, you know. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what's that's what really the problem is with with the streaming platforms is the musicians aren't running those things. It's just you know some schmuck or whatever doesn't know about like you know what your guys you know how you spend your money to make the albums and all the stuff that goes into you know producing music and yeah. they don't care about that. They just well, care I about talk, the I talk to Daniel. A I talk to Daniel Eck every day, and he's a good friend of mine. Not oh yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's a musician, but maybe he's like what they call failed musician. Yeah. I'm he has a salary sure. of 30,000 30, bucks a month. So that gives him some leverage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's his salary. And I still don't understand how two billion dollars company can be non profitable. I don't fucking get it. You know, mm, yeah. I really don't. <laughs> so when do we think we're seeing this bit minor thing? We're going to launch it. Come out. We're going to launch it in July, and that, that's the plan. Is that the first thing to release is my my uh, live recording and video of know? this year? Yeah, because we have this Mexico City concert, 30th of April. So we're going to film that and record that, and it's going to come out through that platform as the first thing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to re release it, maybe even before, but it's it really depends. I don't know nothing about that. I made the original drawing. <laughs> 
And then <laughs> these guys are, destroying. Yeah, I, I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna look for it because <laughs> you have to see it. Yeah. And this guy is just because most of these web designers they're like, it's, it's difficult. And he was like, this is cool. Let's do it. I was like, yeah. okay, that's my guy. You know, I like that attitude. So then he started, you know, coding it, and then suddenly it's like. Demo, this is much bigger than I thought. It's like, and then they show me this jungle yeah. of schematics. I'm like, yeah. but it's yeah. that the one I started? <laughs> well, he's he's been working on that since like 25 years, and so it's not just, just my idea; it's his idea too. So it's right. like combined. The two people find that common ground, then it's possible to do that, and it's always a teamwork. There's no way yeah. I could do that alone, you know. Right? Yeah, you don't know all that crap, so no, I don't that's, know. So that's now beyond. I'm, I'm, uh... I'm, I'm really proud because now I'm a senior vice president of the artist relations. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Congratulations. Uh, my, thank Congratulations, you. man. I get my I get my business card as well. Like, you want to have it? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if there's any questions in here. Uh, I some one question. Is pay to play okay to if you sell merch? If you can sell merch. Well, usually you can sell merch any anywhere you yeah, pretty much play, I, right? So I don't know because I don't like I don't do pay to play gigs because yeah. like certain places that do that like why bother just book something at your local nightclub and promote it well make a good flyer get your music out there you know we had but, we had one, if one okay if, it, like if, that, if, it's, but, if you're a professional musician you should already know that like pay to play is is we had, not really your right. best, best <laughs> Timo sells bananas at his shows we we got this gig with Iron Maiden in India or something and the guys wanted to do it I didn't want yeah because I, I saw no value in that why to do that I mean right. just the one yeah. gig to fly right. there you play 30 minutes before Maiden with horrible sound yeah. and they were really pissed off to me when I said when, no who, when was this Stratovaris it was like oh really maybe 2003 or something oh wow so that's the thing but you know pay the play in itself and I say this again everybody has to think what is best for their career. If you think it's cool, it is cool. Right. That's yeah, what I'm saying. The, if you have the dough, I guess, whatever. If you got the money, you could play the game, you know? Yeah, yeah. You could, yeah. You could come to Las Vegas. You could do whatever you're going to do. Here's my money. <laughs> I don't care. That means you're in the, you're financially independent. And if you're financially independent, great. I know, I know a couple dudes that are financially independent that have bands. And... Um, they don't really care about making money in their band. Like uh, you've heard of Enforcer. Yep. Yep. So Olaf, um, you know, he works as like a sound engineer. He's always traveling about and that's how he makes his money. And he just tells me, he's like, I can't worry about all the other stuff with my music stuff. He's like, I do fine. I love my job and I love doing heavy metal too. And he's, he's one of the baddest dudes out there. He's one of the, I, I love Enforcer. I think they're like, top 10 for the new wave of traditional heavy metal bands so yeah. uh, you know it's like um yeah there's now I remember there's... the name of the band it's called metalachi oh yeah metalachi yeah yeah i saw them in dallas <laughs> and they had like, this, that makes like sense. Mar mariachi versions of mariachi like, heavy metal, metal they play <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're killer they're actually yeah, really I, good. I, I think it was so, it was a cool like 15 minutes so then i didn't get the joke anymore so i left yeah yeah, yeah. you know uh, so. this, this question could be for both of you really have uh, either of you suffered any guitar related injuries yeah, well, Kurt, <laughs> what is guitar, Kurt, what is, Kurt, what is guitar yeah. related, related injuries well I, <laughs> carpal tunnel hurt. syndrome carpal tunnel syndrome nerve damage there's all kind of, I, like I literally got back today from my last appointment of physical therapy on my right arm from playing so many you know because i play drums too you know and i play right, all the instruments right. on my record so when i do an album i'm by the time i'm done with it my right my right arm is so fucked up from playing drums for like two weeks straight basically mm -hmm. recording eight hours a day and then playing all the guitar and i do two guitar parts you know because i do the harmonies and stuff so mm -hmm. i had to you know like full album and then bass 
And by that time, and then I'm clicking the mouse, my fucking right arm is just, <laughs> I can't even, like, I can't even feel, like, I can't even feel the tip of my finger when I'm done with the records. So, but I just got released today. I'm feeling great. So, and that's carpal tunnel, carpal tunnel syndrome. And yeah. that is, um, and it's from music. You yeah. get it. You have to, you have to stretch. My physical therapist is always like, stretch your wrist. Because that's a lot to do, you know, um, the way I, the way I approach things, you know, mm. being a, basically a one man band, I have my live band, but we don't write music together at all. Right. So when I'm in here working like that, that's a serious concern of mine is injury. And I, I definitely, um, How about this? take the time. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that looks good. What is that? Pear? Is that mango. a pear? Oh, mm. mango. That's a mango. Mangoes are delicious. I'm a vegetarian. And a carpal tunnel thing I, happened to my guitar. I am too. I've been I've been vegetarian for a long time. That's why I keep saying I'm, like the, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the only vegetarian that doesn't eat vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> you only eat fruit? <laughs> is, it, is it a fruit only? It's like every day I have a banana and a mango. That's all he eats, actually, banana and mangoes. Guitar related injury might be mm-hmm. when I played in this fucking um whiskey I go when I go to the bar and I, I order two gin and tonics and two beers for my friend and the girl says 50 bucks <laughs> that hurt my heart <laughs> <laughs> I had a heart attack so I guess that's guitar related injury uh, let's see anything else here uh, uh, somebody says my 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 project resurrect album slays that's right project resurrect.bandcamp.com go buy it uh, Ginkgo has been looking forward to this show. Uh, somebody else turned down. Uh, so my friend of mine, he turned down a tour with Malmsteen, two weeks tour. He wanted fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, great. Right. Don't do it. No. Yeah. Ah, all right. Good that's, idea. That's a. Why should you do it? That's a big, big no. Uh, somebody wants to know what uh, you're smoking, Trevor. Um, my mom grew this, so it's oh, really it's cal. California outdoor, whatever she uh she goes to the cannabis dispensary and very cool. She gets, she gets some clones. <laughs> Here's some of her weed. I'll show I'll show everybody right now. The one of the jars. Here's a good jar. Ah. Nice, nice jar. Homegrown mom weed. <laughs> Let's go to the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> So, if there's something yeah. else in there, they're shooting amphetamine or what? That's what, I, that's, what <laughs> that's what I'm smoking right now. Uh, what else? We What's got our here? address, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> somebody says uh, somebody else loves band camp too. He said definitely way to go. Uh, and somebody said when the day comes where there's a global internet apocalypse, I'll be here with all my CDs, laughing my ass off. All uh, yeah. all, all Spotify kids freaking out. I have news for the, I have news for this man. What's that? Jesus loves you. <laughs> uh, I don't sure. understand. I don't understand this one. Maybe Marcelo Kabuli should make should take care of your merchandising. Who the hell's that? <laughs> should I know who that is? Who is saying that? Uh, Ross ninety nine. Uh, it's fucking Nick. <laughs> He's a beautiful man. I'm sure he is. Uh, and what's From the Buenos worst? Iris. What's the worst gig either of you have played? Well, probably the the gig I'm gonna play them uh, this weekend. Oh, that's nice. You didn't play it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, playing, we're playing it to Larry. If you've ever even heard of that, Where so is that? It, exactly, nobody's <laughs> ever heard of to Larry. And so the, it's you know we're we live. I'm in the Central Valley of California. And there is a free, there is a freeway here, the 99, that basically runs from Sacramento to Los Angeles. Mm. And we're all that in between. It's all a lot of, you know, small towns, farm agriculture. Um, and Tulare's about 45 minutes from Fresno. And it's a little teeny town, but, you know, you got to go and, you know, we're from the valley. So I, 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 I you know, I want to play shows around here. You know, just for the heavy metal people that happen to live there, and they this place smells. It's like it's your, it's like a dungeon. It's called Farmageddon, <laughs> and you feel like the world's gonna end after you've been there for an evening. You know, you're like, it might be at the end. There's a homeless encampment next to it. 
it's oh, down no. it's literally down it's like a dungeon and there's a live wire there you can see the you can see the pipe in the back room that goes to the sewer it's like open <laughs> so the place smells like shit like i'm not kidding you so but oh, but it'll be fun i got some some homies bands fortress from la great up and coming new wave attritional heavy metal band philly Bibiano is one of the best guitarists in la right now very young and he's gonna be he's he's so awesome uh and this up and coming band night night and gallo that are on no remorse records and they're young they're like in their 20s uh mm. keeping the heavy metal spirit alive the old school shit so it's that? gonna be a rad it's gonna be a rad show for tulare you know what i mean what so is, I, what is heavy metal spirit um just living free banging your head and having a good time and and not caring about rules and not having to the need to conform that's what i think heavy metal is anyway so that they're sounds, keep, they're keeping cool. they're, they're keeping it like real they played all the show you know they're 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 doing it like how you know it should be done anyway uh it sounds like man award to me but it'll be <laughs> it'll be it'll <laughs> it'll likely be the worst gig i've played this year because there it'll probably like the people that are com that are coming are probably from fresno and they're like why the fuck did you guys have to play an hour out of town that's gonna be the scenario it's like why didn't you just play in fucking fresno man but sometimes though, but, those those the shows that you think are gonna suck they end up being like one of the best shows you ever do oh i'm i have no doubt i'm gonna mm -hmm. have fun i already i already got some buddies coming and that's all I need to enjoy my evening, my friends. A friend of mine at work, his band played a show, and it was like maybe five or six other bands playing, and three of them canceled. And he was like, "Oh man, this show's gonna suck." But then the next day, he was like, "No, it was like it was like one of my favorite things we've done." So you never yeah, know. You didn't, if, you'll never if, know. If you have to sit, if you have to sit and watch three bands you don't like, definitely. Yeah. Get, <laughs> get it over with, you know. Get the get the show on the road. Get the show moving. Yeah. What's your worst uh, gig? Timo. Well, we did a lot of back in 86 to like 92, basically, for like uh, we played to three people and a dog. <laughs> so there was this one week when I still was singing and playing guitar. And so we do we do the, the set and I play uh, we play a song and the guy comes to me, one of the three, and the dog was there too. <laughs> and he gives me like 50 film marks, which is like 10 bucks a note. So <laughs> he gives you money. Yeah. And then he goes down and he starts doing push ups in front of me. And I was like, what the fuck is this? that is, you know, really weird. And then we played the geek. And then uh, my daughter was there. She was like four. Yeah. And we, we thought maybe we don't anchor. So a small, I hear a small voice saying, I hope they're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. You know? That's funny. That's we did a lot of stuff like that, and it it's never been bad. I mean, you take the good with the bad. I mean, yeah. you always do the, basically what I do and with the, with the guys I play. We go, we're entertainers at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you know. We lift their spirits up and we make them happy as we can. So, in Mexico, when I played some of these gigs, there were people like crying, literally. Right. Yeah. yeah. I did see these people like three meters. Well, you know, you don't know what meter is, but fuck we feed mm -hmm. whatever so the guy's crying and i'm looking at him and i'm like what, what is this mm -hmm. no and I, what, what can i say and what can you do and how do you feel when you see that it's like your music and the guy's totally crying, like tears and everything that's awesome that's, that's how much you affected his life exactly and that is really when i start to think of the influence my music has you know yeah, yeah. and ultimately that's for a guy who writes songs, that's the best thing that yeah. can happen. But you'll really see that yourself. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So we got this bit minor thing coming up. Is there any like website or anything out for this yet? Or yeah, there is. I'm gonna put it to there's a press release, so it's gonna be there. All right. You know, in that and yeah, that's that really is the only thing I could come up with as a solution to this. Spotify, yeah. Spotify, whatever, whatever the fire, you know, <laughs> and Apple. And I mean, Apple has better sound quality, I have to say. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
CD, but when there's a flag files and there's a like CD standards. Yeah. So yeah. it's gonna be like that. And it's the same thing. And then you know, and that's the thing. I, I get full benefit from the sales for directly. There's nobody yeah. in between. Right. Only the bit miners, which I'm part of, because I'm the <laughs> vice president. So <laughs> El uh, Presidente. El Presidente. Yeah, I smuggled drugs to Colombia stuff. That's a real <laughs> like, uh, well, well, good. You can live yeah, down in California. See, there's even more opportunity for you in California. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of money, man. <laughs> Some serious green bags. <laughs> so, mm. you know, but in any way, but that's, that's really what I see in the future for all my music, you know. And at, if I at some point get the rights back to my songs, which I hope it sometimes yeah. happens, of course I'm going to put it there. You know, yeah. Right, well, hope but so. I have, like I said, I have no ideological arguments. I have nothing against Spotify. I have nothing against Paul, Paul Young, what is it? Neil Young, Neil Young, yeah. and, and 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 Joe Rogan, and nobody there. And it's okay, Ex- except Daniel Egg. Maybe have a little bit. <laughs> the, the owner, but you know, because you know, he may, he had an idea, and obviously it's big. But then maybe you should go to some course for the management course or something because it's two billion dollar company is non profitable. Right. <laughs> but right. He, has, he has to learn some rules, maybe. Yeah. You know. All right. And as uh, Lazy Bear says, Timo's music has hit me like no other music. Uh, it's amazing to him. So, real cool. Uh, and Trevor, this is your latest album, Unplugged Volume One. I've yet to open it yet, so I haven't listened to it yet, but uh, it's awesome. Oh, I love the artwork. I love all your artworks, by the way, on, on all your albums. Thanks, really man. cool. A rabbit. Is that a rabbit? No, it's not a rabbit. No, no rabbit. Oh. No rabbit. Maybe oh. one on the back, though. It's some Greek thing. <laughs> but uh, what's uh, what's in store for Haunt next? I got a new record out in June. Um, we're going on tour in April here. I'm with um, this band Traveler from Canada. Amazing band. Check out Traveler. Uh, Screamer from Sweden is coming over here. And Sweden. then uh, where's that? Uh, it's in Scandinavia. Oh, uh, anyway. it's Scandinavia. And um, Saber from Los Angeles, who's like, dude, they're they're so rad. So we're all playing the Hell's Heroes Festival in Houston, Texas. And so we decided to go up, take it all the way up to the, the to Canada. So we're going up to Vancouver, and that tour will go all the way to down to Texas and back to California, where we end it so that's that's going to be the first tour for me since uh covid so mm. it's not going to happen there are yet <laughs> why <laughs> there's going to be this new variety called epsilon uh, no <laughs> we're it, america america is not closing down again it's, everybody it's it's everybody's gung-ho here they're like fuck you at this yeah. point they're like we've it's, already we've already not, we've already stayed not, in long enough we have the yeah. solution we're no, not for this vaccine, Vaccine mandate. I just got like an <laughs> app. So now, like my vaccine card is like an app on my phone, and I just like oh. they just I just show them that now. So yeah. it's like it's just, that's just where we are. So if you haven't done that, then you're not. You could. It's it's like a it's freedom with it to me. You know, I'm like fuck it. That what I, whatever I got to do. Just Google. Just back. Google. Epsilon spreads in midair. And you get you know, you know, you know all this all this banana. I'm fucking hungry, so uh, <laughs> oh, I give it to you. So. I'm not. I would fucking eat that right now. I'm starving. <laughs> I mean, I just smoked like two joints, and I'm I like, know. So oh. he's yeah, he's he's on the way to Taco Bell right now. Uh, yes. All right, well, <laughs> so, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna get it going here. Get so, out of here, uh, and thank I'm you very much for one, coming on the show. Thing. Thank. Good talking to you, Timo. Much luck with you, man. The, good, good luck, luck with Bit Miner. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, Haunt the Nation. Same with Facebook, Facebook.com. You know, you just put in Haunt the Nation. That's where you, you can find me. If you're, to, if you're trying to find, if you're trying to find my music to listen to, hauntthenation.bandcamp.com. That directly supports me and what I do. And all my merchandise is up there, vinyl, all of that stuff. Um, Fuck, everybody man, have a great week. Man. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. so have a good, have a good one, Timo. Good Wayne, too, man. Have right. a great and day. I want to get you on my regular show too at some point. So no, we'll be just, talking later. You, right? you know, how, you know how to get a hold of me. I'll talk to you later. Right, of course. See you day. later. Have Thanks. a good one. Thanks for Thanks having for coming me, on. Later. See ya. 
All right, everybody. And uh, Timo, anything else you got to add? I have. I don't. I don't think so. Do okay. you have something? I because I. I'm just. I think that this covers pretty much. I think so too. Uh, it was a pretty good show. You know, coming from two different. You know, he's got his side with. You know, he loves the yeah, visual, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the 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 physical media. Yeah. I love and, it too. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm a CD guy fundamentally. You know. Yeah, and you but, know, and I but, love my physical stuff. But, but you know what? Like I, I always say on all my shows, my car does not have a CD player anymore. So I had to go to digital, you know, and I'm still buying my stuff, but digital is kind of like the way to go, you know, because, you know, I, even at my job, I can't bring a CD player with me. It's, it's, it's impossible. So so. We've been doing this show now, like almost for three years now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you help me in something? No. Goodbye. Uh, have a good day, everybody. No, I, I, have, I have only one request. Well, we're, we're still live. So if this is something how, you can't ask me live. How, how, oh, how will I listen to music in the future? Um, how will you listen to music on your, on your phone? Obviously. Yeah, but I can't use the apps. Well, you're going to have your own app, Bitminer. Yeah, but only my own. Music. Yeah. You don't listen to my own stuff only. I don't Well, you kind of fucked yourself there. <laughs> I painted myself to the corner. You did. You did. Although, you know, I got a lot of stuff. Well, you probably don't listen to half the shit I, I have. So um, I'd send you well, the that's MP3s. Respectable. But... That's respectable amount. Yeah. So. And that maybe no, but something. You can't, you can't send me MP3s, right? Because that would be a pirate. Piracy. It would be well, like a to... reverse Spotify. We don't have to tell anybody. How about the conscious? <laughs> when you go to sleep in the night, you're like, oh, fuck, I sent Timo a thousand MP3s and nobody gets paid. <laughs> and they wake up with a horrible sweat. Like, ah! Well, you know how many CDs I've stolen over the years? Oh shit, we're still alive. Fuck. I had no idea. Ugh. Let's anyway. get the truth out. Yeah, no, I've never stolen what a else CD you have, in my life. What else you have done? Nothing, but we better get out of here before anybody finds out anything. What an excellent show. Timo is an excellent guitarist, and Trevor and Haunt are an excellent band. And yes, they are. Uh, Traveler is a killer band as well. And Saber are also great. Yes, they are very good bands. I actually never heard of Saber. But uh, yeah, some cool stuff. And again, thanks for Trevor for coming on the Timo Tolkien podcast. And thanks for doing this show. We haven't done this in forever. So yeah. we have to try to get, you know, doing this more uh, often. And uh, we still have to go through the uh, Revolution Renaissance albums. We kind of stopped with all that stuff. Oh, yeah, but, exactly. Uh, yeah, we we'll have to do that. Yeah. So we, we have can to do the next one when I'm in the States. Our, no, cool. I, our Revolution Renaissance album is still going to be on That's streaming. True. Are they going to be on streaming still? Mm. Or are they going to move to your Bitminer thing? I'm, I'm going to try. But, yeah. you know, it, it depends on a couple of things. But I'm going to try to get everything. That I possibly can. Yeah. All right. You know, so. All right, everybody. You heard it from Timo himself. All his stuff is going to be removed yes. from all the streaming. For the it's right reasons. Go for the right reasons. And uh, check out, wait for his Bitminer site to come it's out. Like I'm, I'm going to tell this that uh, Bitminer can only choose me or Young. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to choose me. They might choose you, although no, they have yeah, to because I'm the board. Of, you know, I'm, I, I sit in the board. Well, have you li have you listened to any Neil Young songs? They might be better than yours. Well, he did this rocking. He has been world, around. I don't know. I don't That's know the only song I know. I don't know. <laughs> if it's, I, I don't know if the world is so free when I look at all these fights. No, you know, is that, isn't that isn't that ironic I mean, though? He, he sings a song about living in a free world, uh, right? And then he's yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. know I, mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. But you know, it's it's his constitutional right. That's it. I mean, I'm in all for that. You know, that's all and, it is. Uh, Just I don't know. everybody's opinions, I, even I, if you I, don't I, agree yeah, with something. Exactly. I really so. don't know um, who can decide what rules are good for everyone. All right. You know. Yeah. I like the old like, the old saying is, uh, "If you don't like it, don't watch it." You know, it's as easy as that. And I think people, a lot of people have forgotten about that. Does this mean like Holocaust as well? Let's not, you know, today is uh, I saw that. that day. So let's not go there. Is it? Is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. It's a whole, I, I, saw I this, believe it is. I saw what this Whoopi Goldberg said. Did you see that? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> it's not a racial thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And somebody else actually, um, uh, you don't watch wrestling, but uh, no, a wrestler, a wrestler, uh, a wrestler was going to premiere on a, a another wrestling show, 
uh, yesterday and they saw an old interview that the guy did talking about some Jewish stuff or whatever and mm -hmm. immediately told him don't come to the building he started okay. yeah he, he got fired immediately basically just about saying the word just about talking about what he talked about he it was some conspiracy stuff about uh jews oh, and stuff okay. like that so you know yeah, immediately yeah. but it was from you know years ago but you know. yeah was it mel gibson no it was a wrestler oh yeah okay well, he's kind of wrestler yeah. <laughs> you know. I don't. I didn't rest. I was at this one show, this wrestling show with your friend. And I'm like, oh okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That was fun. They but don't I, do that I, no I, more, by the way. Why not? Uh, the my friend who is the wrestler, Eric Adams. He's uh, he's been busy with his own stuff, uh, his mother and stuff like that. Okay. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. She's doing a little bit better, but still. That's that's good to hear. Yeah. I only wrestle with my ego. <laughs> and, and I, I only wrestle. I, I only wrestle to. Lose. Yeah. <laughs> and i'm only wrestling to end the show so okay. we will see you guys next time and uh hit subscribe please hit subscribe button and uh it helps me out it helps timo out too because he's on this network as well yeah. and uh go follow the rat .com website and uh follow us on uh tiktok facebook instagram we're everywhere tiktok are you on tiktok I'm on tic i am on tiktok you should be on tiktok too no. Your music, uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, your music might be on TikTok. Yeah, it is actually. It, it is because when I made the little video, you have stuff to remove it from TikTok. <sighs> it's, it'll be gone from everywhere. <laughs> but we'll have an alternative. Thanks. Thanks All right. See you guys soon, and uh, 